<laughs> and he goes, he's like, I thought you might like this. And I, I, I go, <laughs> and I go, and he opened up the back, and it's filthy. And on the, on the side, it says Scar- Carlsbad School District Maintenance Department. Mm-hmm. And it's gray, and it used to be yellow underneath. And again, I opened up the inside, and it's just covered in crap. But I was like, yo, this is like the perfect size. I hop in, my head, I got clearance. And, um, you know, there's four windows down one side, four windows on the other side. And then he's like, also, the reason why you're going to love this bus, he goes, it's a 1994 diesel, which means you don't have to get it smogged in California. And I was like, <laughs> bingo. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was just laying it on you. I, he was I, laying it. I was, what, what a great salesman to provide you with, like, the crap first to get you down. And then you'll take anything after that. <laughs> yeah. you know, you're just, I'm eating it up. <laughs> and I haven't even heard it start up yet. I was like, I, I, said, I stars, said, yo, but... does it start? And he's like. It might need some new batteries. I was like, all right, well, let's, you start it up, and then we'll go, we'll go from there. I'm going to see how much I really got to dump. He starts it up. Then his wife comes out. I met her. She's super nice, too. And um, it was real smoky because it had been sitting. They bought it at auction from Carlsbad School District, and it kind of sat. They, were gonna, they bought these short buses because they were going to turn them into little schoolies, little RVs. Oh, that's cool. And then they were going to flip them and sell them. Cool. Apparently, he told me this crazy story. He fell off a roof and got hurt, and he wasn't working on them. The wobble. The, that's where the wobble came from. I said, ah, I was connecting dots. I said, that makes sense. And um, so the bus starts up. It's real smoky. It looks like a Michael Jackson music video, but <laughs> it fires up. I'm like, yo, this is cool. And um, so they shut the bus off. And um, so like, well, what do you think? I'm like, you know, I'd really want it. My uncle owns a um, an auto shop in Kearney Mesa. I was like, I'd really want to take it to my uncle's shop and have them pop the hood, take a look at it. And, uh, and I said, in three, you know, three three thousand dollars is what I was looking to spend. But mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm come on, like the picker in me was like, oh, but man, I'm gonna get it for half. I said, I don't know if I could, I could <laughs> I'm even hit you low. I said, I don't even know if I could, I could put more than you know, like fifteen hundred, mm-hmm. you know. And they're like, well, we could definitely do two thousand. And I was like, two thousand cash. And they're like, yeah. I was like, all right, bring it to the shop. We we'll get the AOK, see what it is, and. um We'll go from there. They 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 brought it down from Ramona, um, popped the hood. Literally, only need to like at least to get it mobile, mm-hmm. like seven hundred bucks. And I had that because it was still under my three. Right. <laughs> so I, I I gave him two G's and I went down to the DMV. I got it registered. Um, what's funny is he's like I'm pulling to the DMV and people are like is like giving me the weirdest looks <laughs> like. Uh, these dudes gonna like live out of this thing, be some dirty kids like living out of this bus. You know, you can live off your car now. Oh, so, man. No, man. that's like they, what go, the they go back and forth on that law. So. <laughs> Seriously though, that that's like one of the days you shouldn't have worn a vintage tee because now you just like you know the vintage tee. Yeah, you just, you just look homeless. You know, Nirvana. <laughs> you're just Yo, coming out of a smoky real, ass bus, real grungy. <laughs> um, so then I got the bus register, and then yeah, it needed about like seven hundred bucks uh, worth of work just to the motor. Mm-hmm. I needed a new thermostat, and I needed a new alternator, and I put, had to put brand new like industrial batteries on it because it's diesel, so it's got two batteries. I'm learning stuff. I never had a diesel car before, and I'm like, all right, cool. Um, I just know it's cheaper gas. <laughs> sometimes I mean it's cheaper right now because <laughs> right gas is again crazy. But um, four yeah. nine this morning. Yeah, I, I cried filling up the tank, but. <laughs> Um, so, and, and, and that's really what I put in. So I put about 27, about 2750 into the motor. It was about another 300 to get it registered. Cause it was, I had to get it registered commercial cause I was going to use it for a business and the weight was so much on it. Cause it was, oh, cool. so now you're 50 bucks over your limit. I was, he did everything you know. legal though. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, listen, man, like if I'm going to do the business, I'm going to do it right. You know? And, um, like, I'm, I'm legit. I got my licenses. <laughs> I got my, my permits, you know, we're good. I'm not a businessman. I'm a business, <laughs> I'm a business man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but you know that that's so important. I think a lot of people who are into selling vintage, or either, even if they're selling at swap meets and they're selling, you know, mm-hmm. whatever it may be, um, so many people they don't have like the licenses and they don't have the the paperwork and to, to each their own. But if you want to grow and you want to really be able to track your metrics and see where you're at, to, to know where you're going, mm-hmm. then I think you have to be legit because it gives legitimacy to yourself. Yeah. And again, it's going to, one, you're going to sleep better at night because literally the tax man could come and pull up and be like, yo, you, we, we know because you post on Instagram because that's how people sell now. Yeah. Yeah. You post on Instagram, we, you've been selling for a year and a half. Here in C- City What's of San Diego, <laughs> yo, we need some taxes. And, you know, mm-hmm. so you're either going to pay that or, or pay a fine or, you know. So I was like, let me just, you know, go legit. And yeah. 
so I feel real good. I got my my Chase business account with the name on the car. <laughs> so like super, super official. So official. So yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Okay. Like, so from from there though, like honestly, sky was a limit. Well, you know, sky is I, the limit. I I knew sky is the I knew limit. because it was a small space. It's seventeen feet from the front to the back. Like you know. Most people's beds are bigger. California King bed is bigger than 17 feet, I think. Is it know? really? No, nah, I'm kidding. Damn. Damn. I was going to say, <laughs> holy shit. shit. But like, um, well, pe- my bus looks bigger than it is. My bus fits into an actual one parking spot that you would, like if you pull into a Target, it fits in literally no hanging off the front or the, or the back. So Perfect for a swap meet. Perfect for a swap meet. But when you think about it, that's not a lot of space to work with, right? Mm-hmm. So for me, I knew that visually from a, from a design standpoint, I wanted to keep it as light in there as possible. Um, so I just did the entire inside in just a coat of white, a couple of coats of white, actually, after it was <laughs> cleaned. Um, the floor was a mess. There was a couple of spots in the floor where I actually had to patch and do um, and level the floor. I just did that myself. I literally looked up mm-hmm. on YouTube how to level a floor. Oh, nice. And uh, Did it have ads this time? Yeah, YouTube had ads uh, this time. Okay. Yeah. The, the game has young. changed, You're man. too young for me. Yeah, well, yeah, and then the stupid algorithm got me, and I'm getting ads for like Quickcrete and like self leveling. Like, I don't need this, man, you know. But uh, I looked up how to do, you know, the self leveling. I, I patched the floor, I leveled the floor, and then um, I picked out the floor. I wanted to do it really, really light gray because I was like, again, just wanted to keep it open and light in there. And um, I, I picked a really, really good floor with a, a good insulation to mm-hmm. so it wasn't creaking. Like, so now you're over your three thousand budget. Well, my it. three thousand dollars budget was just what I wanted to spend on okay. the purchase of the bus. I'm just messing with you. No, no, you're, no, you're good. <laughs> and um, and so when it came to the inside, I was like, yeah. it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Uh-huh. Um, yep. you know. Well, that's your image. Like that's your. Yeah. You got to put money into it to make it look how you want and In present my, it. It's a, it's a storefront, so. Yeah, and even like to this day, like it's not to where it could be, but I'm like. It's to the point where, like, one, you wouldn't know it looks like this on the inside. Mm-hmm. Two, it's still dope in here. And I, I did a lot of stuff myself. So after the floor was done and installed, um, which was after the paint went down, then I was like, all right, now I want to build out these racks. So just trying to work with the space that I had, I built out the custom racks literally from Home Depot. Pine wood, galvanized pipe, mm-hmm. measured, cut all at Home Depot for free. Before that, did mm-hmm. you know how galvanized pipe was that expensive? Um, did you have an idea? Or? <laughs> I did. Because um, I know a lot of people like see that on the image and like, oh, that looks dope. You know, I want that as my closet because we don't have much closet room. But then when you go to actually get actual galvanized, yeah, so it's pretty penny. Big thing is like make, make, making sure you're buying like the, because there's two options when you go to Home Depot. Black. You get the black and you got the silver. Mm-hmm. And the silver is crazy expensive. <laughs> people don't know that, you know. And um, the black is dirty and it's got crap all over it. But it's it is a little bit cheaper. And um, but that's why like knowing how much you need so that way you're not wasting. And also, pro tip is using some of the scrap pieces. Um, pro tip. Pro tip. Beow, 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 beow. <laughs> <laughs> um, making sure you're using like the scrap pieces mm-hmm. if you can. If you need to do a smaller. So um, I had from my time at Urban Outfitters, I kind of took in as much as I could as far as like visual space planning. And um, I, I didn't want it to feel like you were being invaded when you walked into the bus. So from the exterior, like it's. A real smooth shopping experience from top to bottom. The face for, because now it's all making sense. Mm. What? The the dots are connecting here. The there's dots a, are connecting here. See, there's with, a method. I could have worked at. I could have worked at a movie theater. I could have worked. You could have had a rolling movie theater. But I, all, but I, exactly. <laughs> no, but I I've I've always been into fashion, and I've always wanted to do a store. And I said, well, if I'm gonna do something as far as retail, maybe I should go work for a company that's killing it, and they've been around for a long time. So I went to go work at, you know, one of the largest retailers to the, my demo, mm-hmm. you know, that exists. And so I tried to be a sponge and I didn't have like some management job there. I was just retail An associate I'm, I'm talking to people, getting yeah. people like, you know, uh, stuff. I'll and, do the grunt work because that's what I need to do. And then when my managers were laying this out is all spaces. Very, this is all very military. I'm sorry, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> recon and then infiltration Yo. and then, you know, subterfuge. <laughs> As a big word. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is all very military. All you know, right. And they just make it using my again, for me, like the biggest thing, the biggest value that I have in for me, it isn't money, it isn't stuff, it's my time. My time is the most important thing because I'll never get it back. I agree. So while I'm at, you know, while I was at work and I saw my boss and my manager laying out new displays or rearranging, you know, things or bringing stuff in from right. corporate, I'm like, yo, like 
you whatever that? you need me, or whatever you need me to do, like I'll help you with. Mm-hmm. And and to them, I'm just helping. But for me, I'm taking all these notes like in my brain, like why he did that or why they. Okay, didn't. well, because like backtrack. I mean, this this uh, the story about it seems like it popped out. You had a dream one day. You woke up out of out of a sleep, and you're just like, I'm gonna do this. But now it sounds like you're really methodical, and you sort of had an idea about something you wanted to do, you know, fashion wise, whether it be selling or distributing or you know anything like that. That it's, it's, I mean, like, there's there's kind of more to it here. Okay, Wait, there's and, levels to and, it. And, and and what he'll say is he'll say, you know, what haven't you done? <laughs> Once upon a time, while I was active duty, uh, oh, here we go. Something else you did. <laughs> my cousin, my cousin was in town, or I was on leave, or one of the two. And um, him and I were you on leave? Were you allowed, or were you like your great grandpa and like just jump? Oh no, yeah, I know. <laughs> like I, I was, I was allowed to be home. I was home. Oh, yeah, I was here in San Diego. I was still stationed up in Seattle, and um, he had just graduated from college in Chicago. And I was like, "Yo, come live with me in Seattle. Like, live somewhere else other than." We have family in Chicago, and then he's from San Diego. That's the only two places he ever lived. I was like, come live with me in Seattle. Like, it'll be dope. Whatever. If you hate it, you can move. Whatever. Right. Experience somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So while we were there, we had this idea for this brand, and we started this, our clothing line, which we thought was super cool. It was called Black Stripe. And um, we just made T-shirts and sweatshirts and hats. Oh. And um, we really like, learned what it took to make one garment. And it, it's more than like, what I think people think. You, right. you know, you're wearing nothing to lose podcast shirt. Yeah. And that was pretty easy though. Just yeah, logo. screen just, print on yeah. that. But if you were going to turn that into a brand, then you would oh, need yeah. like so many you more need things. A sample. And so we uh, we we started that thinking we were going to be the next, you know, like hundreds or like Diamond Supply Co. Or like we were like we're going to be in like Zoomies. We're going to be like Paxton. Mm-hmm. We'll be killing it. And that was like definitely like the goal. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we we lasted for like two or three years before we're like, all right, we can do something better with our time. Yeah. Um, and I don't consider that a failure. But what I took from that was like. Yo, if you're actually going to do something, whether it, no matter what it be, you should dive into the industry that you're in and you should go work in it so that way you can actually see what it takes. You know, people see retail stores or they see a, a, you know, a storefront or a restaurant, and they see customer buys it and they leave. But everything about, you know, when you walk into an urban outfitter is just designed to get you to spend more money. And then once you've made it up in your brain that you're going to spend money, Everything else is designed to get you to spend more money. More money. That's why those little little tiny things are by the register. So you can just be, when you're standing in line, because you know you're going to have to wait, do I need this face mist? Do I need the this face pin? mist? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> the, the, way, the way things are placed, you know, are, yeah. are specific and intentional. And for me, the biggest thing I learned in the military was attention to detail. Right. And um, I try to take that with me, you know, even in the business now and how I've laid out the store how I place items on racks. You'll be, you'll see it when you guys come through. You'll be shopping through something. You'll be like, "Yo, this is like a dope, like vintage Lakers sweatshirt." Mm-hmm. And then you'll get like two more feet, and then you'll stumble across a vintage Lakers hat. Now you thought you came across it on your own. You're like, "Yo, I could oh, put these wow. two together." <laughs> but I put it there. You know that you would self discover it on your own. And so I, I really, really enjoy it. even like my hang tags. You know, like. I use old like sports cards, which is nothing new in the vintage world. But what I try to do is I try to take it a step further. If I'm selling an old Bulls piece from the 90s, the tag that's going to be on there is going to be a player from the 90s from the Bulls. So you'll, you'll see like little gems like that. I want your experience while you're in there. I want you to feel like you're taken care of. Even if you're just browsing, you want Even it to be fun. Even if you're just browsing. Because if you don't have money and you don't, you're like, oh, this is like out of you're where I want to spend. Somebody. You were like, yo, I didn't buy anything, but like, yo, you're into this. You should definitely go check it out. Mm-hmm. Like, stuff is done nice. So, attention to detail is kind of like the biggest thing I've taken away from my career. Just like the way everything is laid out so far, you're either the luckiest guy in the world for just, you know, agreeing to do what you've done in regards to your life experience, or you're one of the smartest guys in the world. I think, for he's, t- I, <laughs> I, I think he's taken everything that's thrown his way and just like sponged it and learned from it. Yeah, I definitely would say luck, man. Like, like, like even, mm-hmm. you know, my, my life now, like, I, I think what it is, is, is I'm not afraid to try something. Or if I have an idea of something that I want to do, like, I'm going to do it. You're, yeah. yeah I, I would rather be, like, 80 years old and completely content with my life because I tried X, Y, and Z. Right. And then maybe they failed and maybe they were great. But, like, I could not live with myself being 75 and being like, man, I could have I could have tried to buy a bus and, like, right. put a store in. Like, Remember the one time I should have? Yeah. yeah. Yo, and so... Um, you be, are definitely a doer. 
Yeah, what like that, that. That's me. I'm like, I'm. Let's figure out how to get it done. Like, if, if we're gonna do it, I want to do it. I want to do it well. Let, but let's. Just there's like no like come back? the information is out there. Like, if you want to start a business, if you want to start a podcast, you want to mm-hmm. like, like I think a lot of times people forget that Google exists. And yeah. You can literally uh-huh. be like. Like I'm sure people have asked you, like maybe on the street, like how'd you even get into starting a podcast? Like you didn't know that these microphones were out there or what software that you're using. No. You threw it into Google or you talked to other people. Yeah. And um, for me, I think you, you have a lot of people who operate from the standpoint of like, I don't want to try something because what if it fails and I'm out of money and I'm out of, you know, X, Y, Z or like people were going to laugh at me and be like, I told you so, you couldn't do that. Yeah. And for me, like I just, I just don't operate that. I don't operate like that. And even from you, like my, my parents, I'm, I will say I'm blessed to have parents that support me. Yeah. Because um, I could imagine it would be a lot tougher if my parents didn't say, sure, like, go ahead, like, try it. Yeah. Because there's a lot of parents that say, no, play it safe. That's stupid. Mm-hmm. Get a job. You're wasting your time. Yeah. Go be X, Y, Z. And for me, you know, I, I love my parents. And, and my dad, you know, when he got out of the Navy, he was a barber. He started a barber shop, which exists to this day. Nice. And so I, I grew up watching my parents be entrepreneurs. And um, so I just loved it being like, you know, it's a Wednesday and it's two. Well, let's go. Or like, you want to take vacation? Cool. You can do that when you work for yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you're on somebody else's time and and someone else's clock. Oh, my God. Yeah. And I I really like the way that you laid out that your dad is also a business owner, because I feel like, like, you know, not success breeds success, but like that mindset of being self-sufficient mm. breeds other mindsets of being self-sufficient, you know? Yeah. And, like, just being adventurous, risk-taking, because life's a gamble, and there's, like, two hards. You can... I, I can it's say a gamble my if you, if, if, shitty if, nine-to-five and be hard, <laughs> or I can go out and buy a bus, and then... Yo, but you could do it, you know what I'm saying? But, like, you know, a lot of it is, like, what do you... If you're content mm-hmm. at your nine-to-five and you're living your best life... No. Well, yeah, that's, 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 that's where it's tough. But like, I know a lot of people like who work, you know, twelve jobs, and, but they they love what they do, and that's that's the key. Like for me, I wouldn't be happy being in a in a cubicle. And for me, my mental my mental health state is way more important than my pocketbook. I could, with the experience that I have, I, I've had interviews with the FBI and TSA, training them for Homeland Security. But like. I'm like, I just know I can't do that for 20 years. Mm-hmm. And working for myself and having the option to, to do what I want. And my day is like, I feel like my days are like the best. Like I wake up like, like <laughs> 7 o'clock, man. I go, I get, a, I get a cup of coffee. Folgers in your cup. Latte, you're just <laughs> latte with some oat milk. And then, you know, I, I send emails. I create stuff for social that I'm going to post for the day or whatever. And then, you know, I'm like, oh, it's 10 o'clock. Goodwill's open, Salvation Army's open, Buffalo <laughs> Exchange is open. So I just started hitting the thrifts, like, you know, because they're bringing out brand new stuff that's, like, just got put out. Mm-hmm. And, like, that's, like, the dream. Like, like, <laughs> like, that's what you get to do. Now, I'm working my butt off, you right. know. Yeah. You know, it's like I say, I, I'd rather work, you know, I work five to nine and not have a nine to five. But, like, I'm like, in charge of my day. And it's hard work and it's, you know, a lot of work and there's a lot of things I have to do on my end. But, like, again... For me, for like my happiness meter, it's mm-hmm. like being able to do that. Check this out too. I'm pretty sure that you're the only one currently who works for Backtrack SD. Yeah, right? one of one. So, <laughs> so your your entire business model really is like almost self sufficient. Like you are you don't have a staff. You don't have to pay anybody's salary. Like you just take care of you. Whatever you make, you make. You do. You know, and it's just like, yeah, I, that's I, I feel like that's smart, perfect. You're doing it right. In, yeah, you know. And, I, you know, and it's having the discipline, too. Because a lot of people, you know, whether they have a regular job and they have a side hustle, right. you start mixing money, right? You, you know, you, you sold, you know, clothes or you sold whatever you sold. And you're like, it's so easy to take that 200 bucks that you made in a couple of hours. And you're like, this is mine now. Mm-hmm. But like the way I have everything structured, I'm like it's it's not mine. It's yeah. the, business. the business, and I can I can let's do the math a month from now and say what can I actually take out of the business to where the business still made a profit. I paid myself a little something, if anything at all, mm-hmm. and can continue to let me buy inventory, travel where I need to go to to buy inventory, and making sure we have enough events on the schedule to where we're out making money. I mean the bus works getting it in front of as many people as possible, which is nice. I can't move my retail store 
from, you know, La Mesa to, you know, college area. Right. But if there's an event going back to school for college at SDSU or yeah, UCSD yeah. and they want vendors, yo, I'm there, you know? <laughs> so. Hell yeah. Make yourself available. And That's, then yeah. See how it goes. I like that. I like that. This is me. 